having a, the ability to drive a hard decision that's not popular, that's not compromising, is also part of the role that we as DHS play. Now, to your point earlier, also, it has to have legitimacy, it has to be backed up by data, it can't be over engineered, right. it has to be correct. But it's not about compromising, right? it's about getting to the right decision. Absolutely, but I think it's a philosophical shift from being the guy that stops people from doing things wrong to being the person who helps people do things right. You know what I That's part of my people. Okay, well, thank you all, panelists, for being here today. Last year, Georgia Pacific became a corporate sponsor of ASSP, uh, and one of the highlights of that where we were able to give up to five students a grant to come and attend ASSP. We cover the registration fees and their travel costs to attend the conference. It allows them to get here at a highly discounted rate so that they can continue their professional development at such an early stage in their career. What was the uh, kind of really nice moment out of that is that after meeting those students, getting to know them, spending some time with them, we realized they were very talented folks um, and, and future safety leaders. So we began the process of staying connected to them. We meet them at the conference, we invite them to dinner, they meet our leadership team. Throughout that process last year, we end up hiring two of the people who attended our networking events and stayed connected to us. So now it's one of our primary recruiting tools for our organization. You should stop by the George Pacific booth because it's a great opportunity to grow and develop as a professional, especially coming straight out of college like I was, to get into this program and we go forward to being developed, being having these opportunities to, to try things out, to, to see what my strengths are, to see what my weaknesses are, and then buttress those with the, the development aspect that George Pacific offers. You should come out to the, the GP booth because it's just a, it's an overall great organization. It's a great company to work for, and we're hiring. Georgia Pacific is active in our Career Center. We would encourage anyone to come to our booth to speak to us about opportunities. If they want to talk to some of our senior safety professionals about their career path and next choice. We're such a large organization, there's probably a little bit of something for everyone. We tend to have a healthy amount of openings for you to consider for your career. We hope that we continue to find the best and brightest to come into our organization, and we feel like ASSP really helps us get to the future safety leaders of, of really the world. We have a lot of craft and trade work at, in shipbuilding, and the new hires coming in don't have that background. So we had to customize safety training for them in order for it to remain effective. And so it's probably happening in a lot of industries, and safety professionals really have to look at how do you train a, you know, a Generation Z person? So we went to the things that they already are, have an affinity for and are used to, which is techniques and things that happen in escape rooms and the interactive and immersive gaming. Me and, and the team developed SPACES, and that stands for Situational Perception and Condition Evaluation Simulator. It's a, an engineered immersive training simulator, but it's also an evaluator. We use it to, to score and judge the participants and get an idea of where what skill level they have in situational awareness, hazard recognition. So when they go on the simulator, they're actually participating, they're injected into that environment and they have to make decisions and they have to respond to things that are happening. They get to experience uh, the cause and effect relationship of hazards and, and at-risk behaviors without getting hurt but they get the takeaway is they really know for themselves that, hey, I could have just been crushed or I could have been electrocuted. And when they realize how easy that could happen and how hazards are hidden in the work environment, it's a real eye opener. So it's been, I think that has a lot to do with why it's been so effective. What we found out in the meantime is that other groups, older groups, incumbent workers and even our managed, senior managers have gone through it and it's just as effective for them. We've reduced our injury rates by 66% in the first two years of operation. Craft people and tradespeople are largely hands-on learners, so kinesthetic training is perfect for them. That's how they learn. So one of the things that we have see skill gaps in is our frontline supervisors in job setup. So we're taking everything that we've learned from spaces and creating a job setup mastery course where they'll have to go in and set a job up from beginning to end. There'll be uh, variables thrown in on them that they'll have to act and respond and make decisions on. And we're also pulling data and scoring off of that so that we're learning how to teach them better. And as a result, they'll be able to, to improve their skills for setting jobs up, being responsible for their crews, and knowing what's right and what's wrong and when to ask questions when they need to. 
So uh, we're looking forward to that, and we're in the process of building a whole separate simulator strictly for that. We're looking forward to the future, and we're really excited about uh, the award, and we thank CentOS and the Society for putting the, the award program together, and it really is nice when you're recognized for, for something like that, uh, especially with from ASSP and, and industry leaders like CentOS. That's a really big, big deal, and, and we're really proud of it. I started my career in uh, the environmental side of the business and then eventually moved to safety. Made the switch to my own company in January of 2000 and have been working with organizations across the world since then in helping them build more effective leadership to produce better results around safety. The session was called Situational Leadership for the Safety Leader and it's really looking at the situational leadership model developed by Ken Blanchard and Paul Hersey and applying that leadership model to delivering results around safety, particularly those results that we have to deliver through others. The key idea is that you cannot take one approach all the time with even the same individual. You really have to think about what is that situation, what is that individual's competency and commitment in doing that task or achieving that goal, and then how as a leader do you adjust your behavior to meet their specific needs so that you can both be successful. Safety is that result that we all have to actively work to produce. It's not something that you can depend on signs and slogans and banners. It is an active, involved process that needs to be completed by that frontline supervisor and not just the safety person's job to produce safety results. If you want to see change, it is a commitment to develop the skills and tools to make that change happen. And many organizations, particularly the ones that I worked with years ago, we promoted people in the roles of leadership because of their technical capabilities. They were really good at operating a piece of equipment or doing a particular task. And as an organization, we say, hey, you're really good at doing that. Now you're in charge, get six or seven other people to be just as effective. We're asking them to develop new skills for themselves to be an effective leader. And we've got to give them as much of those tools to be effective leaders as we do OSHA 10 or safety training, lockout, tag out, confined space entry, all those other training, we tend to give technical based training and development and not leadership based development. You can have all the rules and regulations and policies and procedures you want if people are not confident and motivated to do those things and don't have the competency to do them, then they're just a bunch of papers and documents in a binder sitting somewhere. And, and it's not how the work gets done. The Young Professionals Advisory Council has put on a networking event as an opportunity for young professionals and students who are about to enter into the industry to meet and greet with other young professionals that are already in the industry. The party tonight is very cool. We didn't just reach out to the young professional members, we reached out to everybody. So anybody who might be interested in being a young professional, what we wanted to do is engage them in a networking setting where they can meet other young people like themselves who are maybe just starting in their safety careers, maybe they're already established in them, but introduce them to each other in a really fun environment. And what's better than the new rollout of the new brand of the ASSP to do that? Sometimes we all think of being a member of like an ASSP as something that's for older people who are more established, but that's not true. The YPs really make sure that young professionals have the opportunity to network with people in the next gen, with people who are established ASSP members, make sure that people are integrating and meeting people who can help them with their careers, introducing them to their chapter presidents and keeping them involved because it's really important that we maintain that membership from their youth to when they actually feel like they're a professional ASSP member. I think it's a great opportunity. I mean, you have a diverse um, group coming together all within the same, I guess, industry, but from many different backgrounds and many different skill sets. So that's a huge thing. Come to one event, you'd be inspired. All those new ideas, everybody thinking and collaborating, even if you can't get an expo pass, if you can just come down and attend one event, you would find it so beneficial. You would meet people who you would find interesting, who have the same common interests as you do. I think it's the best next step that you could take to set your career on a trajectory for success. WISE now stands for Women in Safety Excellence, and people know that it's a great place to come to for professional development and advancing of women in the safety profession. If you know nothing about WISE, the first thing you need to know is that we are open, we are welcoming, and we would love to have you. 
We come from all backgrounds, all locations, all jobs, all careers, all industries. We are all inclusive, no matter where you come from, background, culture, doesn't matter. If you are a woman in this industry, or you are a man who wants to support the women in this industry, we would love to meet you. The best time that we really showcase what WISE is about is at the PDC, where any ASSP member can show up at our lounge, whether they're a WISE member or not, learn more about WISE, our programming, and we will welcome them in, whether they choose to join or not. Uh, they can still be a part of our activities. I've already met someone just walking around today who was by herself. She was curious about WISE, and I was able to sit down, have lunch with her, introduce her to the others. The next thing I know is she was part of the group and she's here tonight and she's meeting others and she's networking and that's kind of what I wanted this year. I wanted people to feel they had a place to belong and ultimately just to have a good time. I've always been an ASSE to ASSP member the entirety of my 15 year career in safety. I do enjoy the, the academic sessions, the technical sessions, the general sessions, but I really think that the biggest value comes from networking with other safety professionals. This is our big social networking event for the PDC today, so I wouldn't have missed this for the world. We are focusing on networking tonight and having a really good time and meeting fellow WISE members. We've got a bunch of people in there that aren't WISE members or just learned about WISE today, and so we're hoping to show them that we know how to have a good time, but also we know how to get the work done as well. So I've been working in the environmental health and safety field for over 30 years. I was actually very shy, and the idea of doing public speaking was terrifying to me. And so what I did is I actually voluntarily signed up to do public speaking at the beginning of my career. And of course, in the beginning, I was a nervous wreck, but now that I've been doing it for a long time, I'm very comfortable. And the reason I do it is because I feel like the profession's been very good to me, and I want to give back and share the information and techniques and values that I've gotten over the years. But what I wanted them to take away is actually a technique as well as some technical information about lockout tagout. I personally experienced that through one of my employers that had a fatality and that was a very large OSHA citation. It was a large third party liability suit that took a while to settle. And you know, all of that is kind of the outside of it, but there was a family that suffered from that occurrence. Well, Carol and I have been uh, working together in consulting for a number of years. Uh, I met one of the founders of her company back in the late 90s and started affiliating with them. And so we have developed a long history of working together in the profession, and then that led us to um, the type of relationship where we thought that we had something we could share hopefully and, uh, and, and do some presentations together. I think that we have a unique way of looking at not the full lockout tagout standard and everything that a person might need to know about it, but zeroing in on the portions that tend to give companies the most trouble in implementing in compliance and we think we can give them a different way of looking at it so that they can streamline their compliance efforts and still feel comfortable that they understand what OSHA will be looking for. We're passionate about talking about lockout tagout and I hope we can share that passion with you and share some tools that you can use in your own work environment to 